by 2030, the connections will be start to be made between artificial intelligence and the human, human brain. We've been through a, a, a process of preparation, of getting people, first of all, stage one, addicted to technology that they hold, holdables, smartphones, tablets. That, I mean, that's basically achieved. I mean, you just have to walk through a city and you see the, the addiction. And they're targeting specifically the young. Why? Because the young of today and uh, the children of today are going to be the adults when they want to bring this AI um, connection in full blown. For that to happen, they have to get people addicted to technology to the point where they'll accept it and where it's the most natural thing in the world. And it's happening in front of our eyes. The first stage is to get people addicted to technology to the point where, at the most extreme, they'll get up in the dead of night and they'll, will, they'll queue, standing line, outside an Apple store to get the first uh, of the new technology. And what they want eventually, and not too distant into the future, is people basically lining up to be connected to AI. In the same way that people in Sweden now are having parties to celebrate someone being microchipped, right? All this connects. So the next stage, because the, the idea is to get in the body, the next stage is to um, get on the body. So we went from just holdables, we went to wearables, we went to Bluetooth and Google Glass and Apple Watches and all these other gadgets that go on the body now. Even what they call electronic tattoos that are basically microchips on the skin. And the next stage is to go in the body, which is already starting in places like um, Sweden. And people like Ray Kurzweil, who is a Google executive, I mean, Google and Facebook are really at the cutting edge of this stuff. People think it's a social media operation only or a, a search engine only. No, no, no. Um, this whole Google group now, which is given the name Alphabet, um, uh, are absolutely at the cutting edge of this whole AI technology. So is Amazon. So is Amazon. Amazon's uh, uh, got contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars with the CIA and the Pentagon for cloud <coughs> services and stuff. Yeah, they have massive data services. Massive, yeah. Consumers don't see. So the idea is to, is to take this on. And what Kurzweil is saying, and he, he claims an 80% success rate in, in his predictions of incoming technology and when it will come in. But, you know, if you know when it's going to come in, then you've got a great chance of predicting it, haven't you? You know, it's like if you know when a, a stock market's going to fall because the people you are connected to are going to make it fall, well, you're going to get out just before it falls and you're going to get in just before you know they're going to push it up. I mean, it, you know, you don't have to be, you know, Nostra Bloody Damas if you know the script. This is the sales pitch and this is why they're telling you. The sales pitch is when we connect to artificial intelligence, um, will be superhuman. That's what the sales pitch is. That's his sales pitch. Right. That's going Siri, to be the sales pitch. Alexa, all yeah. these things. Yeah. What you've got um, is the idea that connect to AI and you'll become superhuman intelligent. No, you'll become subhuman intelligent. You'll become a vehicle for artificial intelligence. And whoever controls artificial intelligence will control every the perceptions of every mind that it's connected to. If you're going to make a physical connection with AI, you're not going to do that on a mass scale until you've made a psychological connection. And um, there is a, a process, uh, a psychological process, which is known as preemptive programming. Preemptive programming is, is, is this. You're going to usher in a world that is so different, so dramatically different to what anyone's been used to, that you're going to have an obvious resistance purely by the chasm of difference between um, the world people are used to and the world you're taking them into. A resistance that says, hold on a minute, you, you, you want to do what? 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 
So you prepare them for it through preemptive programming. You put out a stream of movies out of elite controlled Hollywood. You put out television programs, you put out books, you put out all these things that basically portray the world you want to take people into. This is why you've seen so many movies about control by robots, control by technology, of um, synthetic humans. You have the dystopian society being portrayed and portrayed and portrayed. And what that's doing, it's making the subconscious, to an extent the conscious mind, familiar with the world you want to usher in. So when you literally start to bring it in, there's not that chasm that there would have been before. There is almost a familiarity with it because you prepared people by portraying it over and over again in movies. Another part of this psychological connection with artificial intelligence, so we'll accept the outcome that I've talked about, is these Alexas and these Echoes and these so-called office assistants or personal assistants. You start to interact with them as if they're human. And now they're bringing in internet connected um, toys for kids, even little kids, and Barbie dolls that they can actually have conversations with artificial intelligence. They're now bringing in these uh, robots that are uh, these synthetic robots that are looking more and more uh, uh, like humans, a lot of them coming in from, from the East. And this is a whole psychological process of familiarizing um, us with artificial intelligence to getting people to interact with it until it becomes the most natural thing in the world. By 2030, um, the connections will be start to be made between artificial intelligence and the human, human brain. And the human brain will be connected to what he calls the cloud. Another name for this is the smart grid. Basic, basically to artificial intelligence. As um, time passes, artificial intelligence will be uh, more and more of human thinking and human perception until basically it's the totality of human thinking and human perception, at which point we won't be human anymore in terms of the consciousness processes we are using today. We will be artificial intelligence. And this is the assimilation I'm talking about. If, you're, if you are connecting the human mind to a grid, a global technological grid, that grid can be centrally controlled. It will take at the center point very, very few people to run it and even fewer to decide how it's run. I say this to kids and, and anybody else, how long, could you, how long could you live without your smartphone? What is an alcoholic? What, an alcoholic? Is someone addicted to alcohol? Yeah. Why is he addicted to alcohol? Because he can't stop drinking it. But you can't put your phone down. And if you do, within a few minutes, you pick it up again because you're addicted to it. So are you controlling that bit of technology in your hand or is that controlling you? That's controlling you. Do you want your life controlled by a bit of technology? Do you want the rest of your life controlled by it? Or are you now going to go, I'm putting this down? If technology is going to be the servant rather than the governor, it has to serve the interests of humanity and humanity does not have to serve it. We're in a situation now where humanity is serving technology. Uh, and uh, it will be serving AI. Increasingly, it is serving AI in its algorithmic uh, expression. 